Hi everyone, welcome to Bitcoin.com. My name is Rod, I'll be your host. We're here today in uh, uh, Tokyo, Japan, covering Satoshi's Vision Conference, the largest Bitcoin Cash conference, and we are here to bring you the latest news uh, regarding Bitcoin Cash, and of course, uh, uh, everything that's happening in the ecosystem of cryptocurrencies. Right now, joining me today, we have Roger Vu. Roger, welcome. Thank you again. All right, Roger, uh, first of all, why hosting the Satoshi's Vision Conference in Tokyo, and why this name? Um, well, you'll have to ask the event organizers, but it does seem to make quite a bit of sense, right? Satoshi Nakamoto is very clearly a Japanese name. Uh, I think cryptocurrencies have more traction in Japan than any other country in the world. And uh, this is a beautiful, beautiful time of year in Tokyo. All the cherry blossoms are blooming. It and is. I feel like Satoshi's vision is blooming right now, the birth of Bitcoin Cash. Things are back on track finally. So it's, uh, you know, it all kind of comes together and feels like a really good fit here in Tokyo. My first time in talk, actually, I'm having a blast as well. Um, also, can you just explain the relationship between Bitcoin.com and Bitcoin Limited and how those two uh, entities work together? Um, so we, I guess we're friends is the, the easiest answer. So Bitcoin, everybody working at Bitcoin.com likes the Bitcoin Unlimited guys, and I assume they like us. And uh, the vision that they share for the future of Bitcoin is, is one that we share. So we want Bitcoin to be usable by people all over the world as cash, as payments for everything uh, from you know super yachts to, to cups of coffee. Uh, Bitcoin is, is money and, and that's our goal behind Bitcoin.com is to allow everybody on the planet, rich or poor, to be able to use Bitcoin as money. And when I say Bitcoin, I mean Bitcoin Cash because Bitcoin Cash is Bitcoin as described in the original Satoshi White Paper and that's right in line with Satoshi's vision. All right, um, the time of uh, name calling and pointing fingers is over and the Satoshi Visions Conference just became a very technical conference with a great roadmap ahead. How important is this to give uh, uh, Bitcoin Cash a boost in an entire cryptocurrency ecosystem? I think Bitcoin Cash is getting a boost because it actually works as cash, whereas Bitcoin Core no longer does. Um, so it doesn't take anything more than that. When people try to actually use Bitcoin and they see that the transactions are slow, expensive and unreliable, and when they try Bitcoin Cash and they see the transactions are fast, cheap, and reliable, just like Bitcoin was from day one up until this group of people diverted the project and intentionally made those transactions slow, expensive, and unreliable, it's clear to them which version of Bitcoin is the real Bitcoin, and it's clear to them which version of Bitcoin is the one that's actually useful in their daily lives, and that's Bitcoin Cash. Uh, I came across Bitcoin in 2014 looking for a way to actually send money to my parents uh, in Brazil while I was working working abroad and I came across one of your videos and your powerful speech and uh, I actually uh, got me into Bitcoin because I didn't know what it was until then uh, for me to have to actually open a bank account in the US and another one in Brazil and do an international transaction was something, it was a nightmare. It's, it's almost as slow, expensive and unreliable as using Bitcoin Core. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right, and this was back in 2014 and we're in 2018, it's, it's, it's the same thing. And you have a very uh, passionate speech you're, you're, heavy, you're also a very emotional person. I've seen a couple of documentaries when you always talk with passion and you have tears in your eyes. During the Nakapuko talk as well, uh, uh, you spoke uh, about uh, someone who sent you a text message uh, saying how this could change the world. And again, you had tears in your eyes and you always express yourself in a very honest way. What's the true motivation that drives Roger Veer to actually uh, try to uh, increase and move uh, humanity forward? I think I want to have a better life for myself, so it, it's my own self-interest that drives me forward, but no man is an island, so if the entire planet is doing better as a whole, myself personally get to have a better life. And I guess I, I feel so lucky, and here I am in Japan, I don't have to worry about getting hit by a drone strike, I don't have to be worry about being robbed on, on the street. Uh, when I was living in the U.S., for the most part, it was the same way. But then you hear about these other people, like the, the person that was text messaging me in the morning in Anarchapulco. This is a young man living in Afghanistan, his entire life he's known nothing but the possibility of having a bomb drop on his house or his neighbors be killed or all sorts of horrible things happening. And, and he told me that for the first time in his entire life, thanks to hearing about Bitcoin, he now has hope that the war might come to an end, whereas he never ever thought that the war would ever end in his life because that's been the only thing that, that he knows. So, And if you think about what war is, it's diverting a whole bunch of economic resources and, and manpower and money to build a bunch of bombs Bombs don't feed people, they don't house people, they don't heal people that, that are sick. They then take those bombs 
and all the money that were used to build those bombs that could have been used to build houses for people to live in or clothes for people to wear or food for people to eat. They then take those bombs and they use it to destroy houses that people were living in, to blow up supermarkets that have food for people to eat or to blow up farms that are growing food for people to eat or factories that are building clothes or cars and things. So they're diverting money that would be used to produce things that people want and need in life and then they use the things that those resources are misallocated to to destroy things that are making people's lives better. So they're lowering people's standard of living by building the bombs and then they're lowering people's standard of living by destroying things with those bombs and that retards the entire world's rate of economic growth. And if you think about it, increasing the entire world's rate of economic growth is the best thing we can do for every single human being on the planet, including myself. It makes it so people live longer, they live healthier, they're happier, they have a better life all together. And like, I'm really excited about the technological singularity. Right now, the smartest things on the entire planet are human minds in our human heads. Pretty darn soon, computers are gonna become even smarter than us, and they're gonna be able to solve all sorts of problems that we haven't managed to solve yet. So like, we, solving problems is a good thing. Let's solve them sooner rather than later. And so if you want to solve them sooner rather than later, the best way to do it is through faster, a faster rate of economic growth. So even if the world's governments have been retarding the rate of economic growth by just like half a percent per year, if you compound that over the last couple hundred years, we'd already be going to Mars and have flying spaceships and be living forever. Like the world would already be this amazing place far more exciting than anything you ever saw in the, the Jetsons or any uh, science fiction movie. And for me, I see Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies as a tool to speed up the rate of economic growth for the entire world and make all of us have these wonderful lives like we've read about in science fiction books or seen in the movies. Like, that's exciting stuff and I want that to come sooner rather than later. And Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies are a tool to make those things happen sooner rather than later. So that's my motivation. How Bitcoin Cash can help defund wars? So there's quite a few different ways Bitcoin Cash can help defund wars. One of the most interesting ways is if we can have the entire world's currencies be replaced by cryptocurrencies that aren't issued by any central banks, suddenly you take away the tool of inflation to fund for uh, fund wars. So it wasn't until the advent of central banking that wars really became possible on a grand scale and wars that could go on year after year after year because governments fund them by just inflating the currency. If they print as much money as they want, they have an, uh, effect, effectively an unlimited budget for these wars. So if we get everybody using Bitcoin Cash or cryptocurrencies, suddenly governments no longer have the ability to do that. Or a more interesting example, or another potential example, once cryptocurrencies are even more widespread, let's say it looks like you know, some bad politician somewhere is threatening to attack some other country. Rather than having to raise you know, hundreds of billions of dollars to build tanks and airplanes and guns and bombs, what if you just had a bounty of you know, $10 million and say, hey, if you invade anybody that chops your head off, gets $10 million bounty, well, that guy's probably not going to invade. And you can have, you know, a lot more peace that way as well for, you know, 1% of the price or a tenth of a percent or even less than that of what they're spending on building these big giant war machines. Plus all the people that are working in the factories to build the guns and bombs and tanks. Instead of working in those factories, they can work in factories that produce, you know, cars and houses and food and things that actually improve people's lives rather than destroy people's lives. How, um Right now, like everybody that knows a little bit of history knows that the banks were the biggest sponsors of wars. Right now, you, me, everybody involved into cryptocurrency are treading this business model. What do you think that the banking system will do because they already finance huge wars? What do you think they will create? What kind of strategy do you think they will create it to attack us cryptocurrency enthusiasts? So the banks are made up of lots of different people, and I think lots of people working at banks will hear the things that I'm saying. They say, yeah, that's great. We, we need to have a faster rate of economic growth uh, for the world, and we need to get government out of the way of the entrepreneurs in the economy to do these things. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of them will agree, but maybe some of them out there won't. And if you wanted to devise a strategy to delay the adoption of cryptocurrency, and you wanted to figure out how can you stop these improvements coming to the world, uh, for your, so you can have your own little niche that has you know, your, your own special advantage there to the detriment of the rest of the world. If you wanted to do that, I think the most effective way you could have possibly done it would be by limiting the block size of the, the Bitcoin network, which then limited the amount of people around the world that can use it. It made the user experience horrible. It made the transactions stop being fast, cheap, and reliable, and made them slow, expensive, and unreliable. When things are slow, expensive, and unreliable, people aren't going to use it. So. Uh, They've successfully delayed the adoption of cryptocurrency around the world by years because of limiting the block size on the Bitcoin network. So if you wanted to attack cryptocurrencies and, and the 
adoption of Bitcoin around the world, I can't think of a more effective way to do it than what they've actually done. And I don't know that they did that on purpose. Um, maybe it was just ignorance, or, or maybe it was intentional. I, I don't know. But either way, the net effect was uh, we've delayed the adoption of cryptocurrency by years because of that. But uh, I don't think it's going to happen ever again because people are wising up to that. And today for Satoshi, Satoshi's Vision Conference, uh, extremely successful conference, full house, fantastic speaker. Uh, what's the plan for next year or the, the years ahead for Satoshi's Vision? So um, we're the major sponsor of the event, but we're not the organizer of the event. So we'll have to uh, talk with the organizers of the All events. Right. But Bitcoin.com is more than happy to sponsor the event again next year. And uh, you know, this the, the entire event has been completely sold out. And uh, I think we'll have a substantially larger uh, conference next year. Roger, thank you very much for inviting me to host a couple of interviews. I really appreciate. Thank you. Once again, everybody, uh, Rod here reporting for Bitcoin.com, uh, Satoshi's Vision uh, Conference here in Tokyo, Japan. I'll see you later. Carry your own bank with you with Bitcoin, where only you have access over your funds. Send any amount of money to anyone instantly anywhere in the world without any restriction for pennies with Bitcoin. Bitcoin.com's wallet offers a secure and simple interface in multiple languages and currencies. Download the Bitcoin.com wallet today.